how to put a Vicera boiler into service mode. Put it into maximum for heating, maximum for domestic hot water, and then also minimum for your flue gas analyzer. My name is Alan Hart, and in today's video, a really short video for you today to show you how to put the Vicera Easy Heat into service mode for your flue gas analyzer to put it into high and low so you can get your the correct readings for the flue gas analyzer when you're going to do a service on one of these boilers. Also, I wanted to show you about the importance of doing a service correctly. This is a heat exchanger. This boiler has never been serviced. It's a right mess inside. So just to show you the importance of servicing boilers correctly as well. If you like this type of video, if you could put a thumbs up, I'd be really grateful for that. And if you know of any other boilers that have the same sequence, if you could put a comment below and let me know. I think the Vision um, is the same, but there's a few different boilers and they've all got the same, same way of putting it into service mode. So yeah, without further ado, let's take the case off and let's do it. Always remember to, if you're gonna take case of a boiler, you must be gas safe registered or competent to do so. Or you, if you're a trainee, you must be working with somebody who's competent to do so. And always make sure you're safe. So TB118, check, make sure that you're not gonna get electric shock. I'm not gonna go through that again in this video. Um, but yeah, let's take case off. Let's have a look inside. I've removed the screw out of the bottom here and the flap will just lift down. But first of all, you need to put it into the standby or the off on the control. And then if we pull the flap down here, there's a little, there's this little cover that goes on the board. And then all we need to do is just press this button in here. If we press it once, we'll see the orange light starts to flash. And that takes it into high on central heating. And then if we press that button again, we can see it's gone orange and red. That takes it into high on hot water. And then again, if we press the button again, it's now gone green, fixed green, flashing orange, and that now takes it onto minimum. And now what I'll do is we'll put this into maximum. I'll show you the CO readings with the flue gas analyzer and then we'll put it into minimum and I'll show you the readings on that as well. So we've got that on high now. And we can see on there we've got 8.9 and we've got CO, we've got 94 parts per million. So on minimum there, as we can see, we've got 9.5 CO2 and 19 parts per million on the CO. So that just gives you an idea of what the readings should be. What I'll do next is I'll show you how to adjust the gas valve should that be, should, uh, should it be out and you need to do it. What I would say is always refer to the manufacturer's instructions. Different boilers and different models will have slightly different readings. Also you might have a a percentage that you can have it slightly out and also one thing I would point out is if you go to do a service and it is out then in my opinion I would suggest that you would strip it down and have a look inside because what's happened on this particular boiler we've had a new heat exchanger and what's happened is according to the logbook on this boiler it was a year old but Further investigation has said that it could be anything up to five years old, but I'll talk about that near the end of the video. But this one, what's happened with this one is, what we think's happened with this one is, people's come to do a service on it and they tweaked the gas valve. And then when I tested it, it was correct on the gas valve. But once when we put the new heat exchanger in, or when the carer came and put the new heat exchanger in, the readings were way out. So what I'm trying to get is, don't just adjust the gas valve to get your readings. Make sure that the, the heat exchanger is clear. So if you're gonna do a service on it, you'd need to be stripping it down. And one tip as well from the engineer is, 
that the gasket on the burner, as long as it's not ripped, you can reuse it. Um, so yeah, so what we'll do, oh, just one thing as well I wanted to tell you, in the instructions, these lights, it actually says the lights are uh, yellow, um, I've said orange, they look orange to me, put a comment below, let me know what you think, are they orange, are they yellow? Um, so yeah, now what we'll do, we'll, we'll have a look at the gas valve and I'll show you how to tweak the gas valve. To adjust the readings, you'd obviously have your flue gas analyzer set up and calibrated. You'd have it in the flue test point, not in the um, air integrity one, you'd have it in the flue one. And then you'd put it onto the setting that you require. So I've shown you how to put it into maximum. So you push it, put it into maximum. Personally, I would do it in maximum on hot water. And then you get your Allen key. And on this one, the 2.5 mil does the maximum. And this is in this slot at the top here. And what you do, what you do with that is you turn it ever so slightly don't turn it too much and then wait and see if it settles and again same with the minimum the minimum is a four mil allen key and that's in the in the bigger slot there and again you just adjust that turn that slowly obviously you've turned the board you've changed the board to minimum so that you can do your minimum reading and then it may be that you want to go back, press the buttons again, go back to maximum on hot water, make sure that that's still okay, and then maybe go back to minimum if you want it to. But that's how you would adjust the gas valve. It's, it's fairly easy to do, but like I say, only do that if you know that the heat exchange is clear, because you don't want to make it worse. If last thing you want to do is have a heat exchanger go like like what's happened on this one um yeah so i hope that i hope that has been of some help to you if you've got any questions with that please put them in comments below you've got this boiler here if there's any questions at all on this boiler uh, just ask and I'll, I'll try and do a video on it and that's it really for this video uh, just one thing i just want to give a shout out to vicara I contacted Vicara on Thursday afternoon, I messaged them, told them I had a faulty heat exchanger on a boiler, they sent somebody out on Friday morning, first thing Friday morning, half past eight, and they installed me a new heat exchanger in this boiler. Now, we looked at different things, we looked at serial numbers, and we're guessing that this boiler is actually about five years old. I don't actually know what's gone on. My guess is that somebody's maybe done a DIY install or they've had somebody install it that hasn't done a very good job. And then they decided they might want to sell the house. So then they needed a certificate for the boiler. So then they paid somebody maybe to come and do a certificate on it. I don't know, I don't know what's happened, but please put your theories below, let me know. But this boiler, 100%, definitely is not a year old. They stopped producing this boiler, this particular um, serial number of boiler, over three years ago. So, as I say, me and the engineer, the, the, only, the only suggestion we could think is that it's been installed a while and they've needed to register it to sell the house, and that's why... Um, but clearly, from the condensate trap was full, the heat exchanger, as we see, the heat exchanger is absolutely chock-a-block. I can't see that that could possibly happen in one year. But again, please put a comment below. Let me know what you think. Have you been to any of these that are a year old and they've been like this? I doubt it, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, but as I say, big shout out to Vicara. They really helped me out with this. Also, they came, they put a clamp up flu for me as well. So, at least for now, I better plod on and have this boiler working. 
So if you do have any questions with this boiler, just let me know. You can do any tests that we need to do, do any videos that we need to do, alt to help the new trainees out. And, and then shortly after that, we'll take this out. We'll put a new boiler in. So if you've got any suggestions on what boiler I should put in, in my house, then again, please put a comment below. And I have got an idea of what boiler I'm gonna install. But yeah, put a comment below. And um, yeah, I hope this video has been of some use to you. Um, thanks for watching. Please do not take any of these videos as factual. Always read the installation instructions for the boiler you're going to be working on and follow any regulations at the time.